Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, insurance agent was being rude and yelled at me for wanting to renew my insurance. Switched insurance company, agent's manager called, told him the story, she was put on leave. The second story, my boss punished me for hurting myself at work. So I called a bunch of government agencies on him and probably got all of his businesses shut down. The third story, person wouldn't supply our bakery with what we needed so we told people who hated her more than us to order some and they together put in a quadruple order that she had to fulfill or she'd look bad. On to the first story. Wanna talk right now? Nope. Okay, so this is a last few days thing. My car insurance expires in a few days, end of October. Naturally, my insurance company tries calling me every day at about 11 a.m. This time is a university classes time for me, so I've been ignoring the calls for some time, knowing I'll renew my insurance on the app. One day I was free for three minutes, exactly when they called me. The call went like this, insurance agent, IA. Hi, is this OP? OP, sure it's me, IA. Well, we've been trying to reach you for quite some time. Let's renew your car insurance, OP. Sorry, this is a school day, so I don't have the time now. I'll renew it through the app. IA, this is a one minute phone call to renew it. Let's do it now. OP, I'm sorry, I don't have the time right now. Also, I wanna change my payment method, so I'll do it on the app myself. I've already seen the price there, and I just need to change the payment. I'll do it before it expires. IA, this is not possible because of a technical issue with our app. Let's do it now, it's just a minute. OP, oh, so your app isn't working properly? As already said, I don't have the time right now. IA, sir, I'll need you to renew your car insurance now. You won't reject any more phone calls from us. OP, okay, I see your app isn't working and you're yelling. I'll contact you when I feel like it. Goodbye. Hangs up. Q Petty Revenge. I decided to do my market research properly. Found a cheaper insurance company, much cheaper 500 euros per year, where I'll get more benefits and everything can be done online. This new insurance will also disconnect my previous insurance. The IA's manager called me, a day after I've paid for my new car insurance. Manager, hi OP, I see you've stopped your car insurance with us, may I ask why? OP tells him the whole story, suggests him to listen to the phone call as all their calls are recorded. Manager, thanks for the info. Today I got an email from this manager. That agent had a lot of prior complaints, and he wanted to make sure I know she was put on a non-paid leave indefinitely. Also apologized multiple times and gave me his personal number, in case I'll need anything from this company. Revenge is best served quietly, especially when it's petty. The second story is, My boss suspended me for his negligence, so I ruined his life. For a little context, I work at a vape shop which is already in a rough space due to regulations and laws the government is putting on us. Due to this, we were well aware that certain products we sold and made were highly illegal and enforceable at any time. I, 25 male, I've been working at my job for a little over a year and a half. The owner of the company is the one who hired me and she was the biggest sweetheart in the world. Unfortunately, she was forced out of her company by her son. He's the type of person who believes that he's always right and if you don't agree with him, he'll completely ignore you or fire you. He literally forced his mom into retirement by threatening to unalive himself and continues to use that card every time she even says she wants to come visit. Last winter, we had a massive snowstorm. Getting to work was rough, but we were told that we had to come anyway. We got there and the snow isn't plowed from the parking lot because he didn't want to pay the guy to do it so we had to. Due to the lot being absolutely massive, we couldn't get it all done in time for us to help customers. As they came and went, we noticed the snow being patted down into the ground and essentially turning into a slip and slide. Of course, he didn't do anything about it and asked me and another coworker to clear all the garbage out of the other side of the building. When I did, I slipped and hurt myself. I didn't file for workers comp, but told him I'd need to rest myself while at work. The next shift I sat almost the entire shift and because I couldn't do anything, I sat on my phone, only to get up to help customers. The next day my manager tells me he got out of a meeting with the owner's son, and I was suspended for a week, five shifts. As I'm a college student and rent an apartment and have car payments, I couldn't afford to lose five days of pay. I marched into his office and laid it out, that either he fires me so I can collect unemployment or unsuspend me. He told me neither was happening and that he was going to use me as an example to the rest of the employees. I was peeved and cursed him out. He doesn't like confrontation so he shortened my suspension to get me out of the office. He then treated me poorly and singling me out for everything everyone else also does, but I was the only one being punished. 
Then comes the fact that he wanted to reconcile by forcing me to do handyman work around the place, and didn't give me the tools, equipment, or training to do or use any of these objectives. This was the tipping point for me. The revenge. Due to being constantly singled out, I came to learn that everyone else was unhappy with this fact. I learned all the dirty little secrets about the company, including all illegal products, labor violations, tax violations, etc. I used these secrets that I learned to call multiple government agencies. FDA, OSHA, DOL, and I report him by name. First, OSHA came and did an inspection on my day off. He told everyone they only cited him for a small violation, and he was good other than that. I was obviously angry at that, but a few weeks later I got a packet in the mail telling me he got cited for everything, and he was getting massive fines. I then get called into the office again with the manager who told me I was suspended. He proceeded to tell my manager that he was getting demoted for not writing me up more, and that I was no longer getting my raise until I fixed my attitude. This of course was right after he said, I don't care that you called OSHA. This little act is known as retaliation, which is illegal to do to people who call the protected agency like OSHA. He refused to even look at me at this point because if he did anything that would imply he was punishing me for calling OSHA, I would have a lawsuit to destroy him. Now to today. Another day off for me and I get a text from a coworker at 11 a.m. That message was FDA is here. The manager quit and it's crazy. The FDA and IRS came rolling in full force in black trucks and SUVs. They came in and raided the place, seized all illegal products and all the paperwork pertaining to the business. They're still there as I write this, so hopefully there will be more to come. But knowing how this works out in most cases, I won't have a job much longer and will be on unemployment. Update 1. The ATF also showed up. They confiscated all the house-made juices. We apparently don't have a manufacturing license. None of us knew this and that means we may no longer be able to sell products. The IRS showed up because there's a possible cause for an investigation and a tax evasion. As I learn more, I will continue to update. Update 2. It seems as though through talks with the lawyer, the son decided to actually take the heat for all of it and is going to have to pay massive fines, and is possibly looking at jail time. He likely won't ever be able to get a manufacturing license for the rest of his life, and they said essentially that he won't be able to open any new businesses. I know he had two new locations rented out, and in the process of opening, and those are never going to happen now. They're raiding his other business today, and that's going to be interesting considering that if he doesn't have the paperwork for that business, it could lead to much, much more jail time. So as of right now, even though my job isn't shutting down yet, his other business is getting raided, he can't open the two locations that he's put an SH ton of money and time into, and he's going to be fined all he's worth and possibly go to jail. We'll continue to update. Did you call back OSHA in regards to the whistleblower protection? I did. After that happened, and unfortunately it wasn't big enough of a retaliation for them to do anything. They mainly punished my manager by demoting him next to me for not writing me up. In the future, always always write up an incident report if you get injured at work. Even if it's minor at the time, the injury can get worse in the following days. It protects both you and the company. There was an incident report. The injury wasn't that large, just required me to sit down for a few shifts, so I didn't apply for workers' comp. The way I read that was, the manager doesn't like confrontation. The penalty was handed down by A.H. Sun via manager. So to make OP go away and stop the confrontation, manager reduced penalty. Exactly. He will literally sit down all day looking at the cameras and then text my manager to tell us every little thing we may be doing wrong. What were the illegal products? I'm assuming something with THC or maybe high concentrate nick. It wasn't illegal in the sense that it was harmful. We just didn't have the license to make it in the lab that we have. Making anything we made completely illegal products. We followed all US standards and didn't put any harmful chemicals in. OSHA showed up. Been at my job 33 years. Multiple angry ex-employees have reported my employer to OSHA. I have yet to see them show up at my workplace. Honestly, I got a call within a day and I was so confused and surprised. He did lie to us saying they didn't cite him for anything, but I got a copy of the report sent to me and he had to pay big fines. Protect yourself. If this person is serious about ending his life, then he has nothing preventing him from coming after you, especially when he has your personal info. I'm assuming since you're an employee, just something to consider. The complaints were all made anonymously. If he tries to figure out who did it, it can only add to his sentencing. Also, it had opened him to a world of hurt when it comes to whistleblower laws. I was just basing that off the fact that he didn't care that you called OSHA, which led me to believe that even if it was anonymous, he assumed it was you. Based on this story, it also seems he doesn't give an SH about laws. Yeah, but if he doesn't want to literally be in jail for his entire life, and or want to not be completely homeless when he does get out, he won't do anything. The only thing he cares about is himself. The last story is, you'll do your job one way or another. I manage a bakery, and we primarily make desserts for the catering company we work at but we also provide items for a few cafes that the company owns. 
a lot of the items from the various menus overlap onto the catered menu. Well, a few years ago, the brilliant idea is to suddenly start making bread. The CEO wants our bread made fresh. It was a bad idea and has already been squashed, but it lived for about a year. To make it happen, he promoted the baker at one of the cafes and gave her a kitchen at one of our venues, and bread making responsibilities, and a staff of two. They were supposed to make bread and supply the cafes with what they needed, as well as supply those the overlapping items we would need. And my bakery was supposed to focus on the catering menu and revamp it for more high-class parties. Turns out cafe turned bread baker was terrible. Add everything. And she was super slow, and really into blaming other people for her mistakes. Her two assistants quit and tried to come work for us, but we only had space on the team for one of them. That one woman told horror stories about hours being effed with, how she never did any work, lies she told the CEO all sorts of things. Her previous staff at the cafes, she had been pushed out of one into another, all hated her. At the time, her current staff didn't exactly like her, but they worked well enough with her that the bakery was mostly functional except a few hiccups. The two staff over there do everything without complaints, and Terrible Baker sits in the office and pretends she has so much paperwork to do, and so many emails to answer. Obviously, some stuff falls through the cracks with that system. We keep trucking along and then one day, one of the sales reps wants to add on an item that is one of the overlap items the other bread and cafe bakery is supposed to make. We've had issues getting our stuff from Terrible Baker, so I email over and include the sales rep, the sous chef, and obviously Terrible Baker when I ask for the thing. Now, this thing is always supposed to be in stock over there. It's a pain in the A to make, but it freezes well and makes a lot of product, and honestly doesn't take long to make. The prep is just really annoying. The need for it at various locations means it's never in the freezer for more than a week. There's no reason why she shouldn't have any, so of course she didn't have any. She replies back to just me saying she's way too busy to do it, and she knows we're busy too. Just tell the salesperson she can't have it. I add in everyone else to the email and tell her not to worry. We'll make time to make it and then leave it to the sous chef and others to decide what to do about her, since once again she isn't doing what she's supposed to do. And then I call over to our two cafes that she's supposed to supply for, and ask them if they needed the item, because she didn't have any and was too busy to make it. They probably wouldn't get it if they ordered. Both cafes hated her because she worked at both of them before the bread bakery, and she was terrible to them too. Each cafe ordered double batches of the item, and since she'd been lying about how well she was doing, and how she had so much stocked up, she had to stay late to do it, she had to make certain it was ready to be picked up and delivered the next day, or else the cafes would complain loudly to anyone. She didn't suspect anything and came by a few days later for a meeting, and told our bakery that it was nuts. She was there until 8pm baking since the cafes needed so much. Ugh, she needed better staff who could keep things stocked. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a nice day. Thank you for watching.